Greetings. This is the 25th Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, the Gospel lesson today is from Mark's account. It is the 12th chapter, the 38th through the 44th verses. And Jesus is teaching. As he taught, he said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for the sake of appearance say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury, watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. I'm asking you now to think about the way Jesus can at times, like today, be persistently inconvenient. This one is about Jesus being persistently inconvenient, persisting in his critique of the elite ones around him. In Mark's story today, the elite are represented by the scribes. Who represents the scribes? or the elite of today. The widow giving all she had was caught by Jesus' attention, holding back nothing. She was all in, 100%. We watch any well-trained athlete perform and we see a person who is all in, holding back nothing. I ask you to shift your eyes about 15 degrees to the left to see accomplished musicians who are also all in, holding back nothing during the worship, leading us in hymns and more. They, like the poor widow, do this to glorify God. When we confirmed our baptisms, we affirmed our membership in the church, the body of Christ, and we said we are all in as well then as we are now. Now last Sunday, five of our sisters and brothers in Christ affirmed their infant baptisms before the session. Today we have the joy to receive them into the household of faith. They too are like the widow who Jesus observed, holding nothing back. In a few minutes, we'll all confirm our baptisms by repeating the Apostles' Creed. This is the oldest creed in the church. It's been used as a statement of faith since before 390 AD by converts entering the church following their baptisms. Each time we say the first two words of the creed, I believe, we are, like the widow, all in. We're holding nothing back. We are reconfirming our baptisms each time we say this creed and recommitting ourselves to what we believe about Christ, God, and the church into which we have been engrafted. Part of this creed affirms that our Lord was assassinated for his beliefs and his criticism of the culture in which he lived. Through Jesus' short life, we see that God was all in for us and for the world through Christ. Now that I have said this, I want to also say that this is only part of Mark's gospel story. Jesus used the widow's total commitment as a sharp contrast to the scribes, those of power, prestige, and authority, they represent the elite within every nation, culture, and every community from before Christ to his time and beyond to today. By the standards of many, perhaps most of the world, we 
could be considered to be the elite. Educated, whether working or retired, we have resources, therefore we have options. Perhaps influential among friends and family, we are gifted, as were the scribes. How are we investing the gift of who we are? I was reading Dietrich Bonhoeffer last Friday, the great German professor of Christian social political justice who was imprisoned and then assassinated by the Nazis for his Christian beliefs, his writings, and his actions. He presented a paper on what those in the Third Reich called the death of the church in 1932. He was troubled and warned his country and the world about how the quest for security through the nationalism of in Germany that existed had become the great idol, the idol in place of God and the church. The same can be also seen occurring today. He was as have been so many Christians like Martin Luther King Jr., all in for Christ's vision of justice in the world, for God's vision of justice in the world. Not a watered-down, lukewarm justice giving lip service to Jesus, but full-throated justice in which Bonhoeffer gave his life for the sake of the gospel. And the SS doctor who witnessed Bonhoeffer's death later recalled a man, quote, devout, brave, and composed. His death ensued after a few seconds. I have hardly, he said, ever seen a man die so entirely submissive to the will of God. Bonhoeffer sent one final message to George Bell in England, quote, this is the end for me the beginning of life. We cannot help but observe in today's gospel how Jesus looked down, looked upon the elite of his time. Those who expected to be recognized, who, who expected to be listened to and respected for nothing more than being educated, wealthy, and powerful, usually born into those positions. Hasn't it always been assumed that the elite are special and deserve the best seats at the play or the restaurant or the game. After all, they can afford it. So, they must deserve it, right? Not so fast, says our Lord Jesus, who turns this perspective on its head. We might well well be all in to our own lifestyle, which gives us flexibility and the freedom to do whatever we please, to enjoy our lives while the widow gives all she has to God. Doing as we please may not be doing what pleases Christ. Finding what we are to do with our lives, that is what pleases God. That is to find our vocations that is God's call to each of us. To borrow a thought from Samuel Cruz, the Associate Professor of Church and Society at Union Theological Seminary in New York. Throughout the ages, Jesus has been persistently inconvenient for the elite classes of his and our societies. When I first read that, I cringed because I know he is correct. I know he has stated the truth. Persistent inconvenience is anytime Jesus, Jesus and the true church challenge or are critical of a socioeconomic or political system which undermines or ignores or disenfranchises someone, especially the disadvantaged, and the poor. The elite of every culture before and after Christ usually behave in ways that promote their own self-interests. Regardless of politics, Jesus presented two facts for us today. We are to emulate the widow who was self-giving, 
And second, we are to reject the behavior of the elite scribes who our Lord God condemned for their self-serving behavior based on a cultural norm of entitlement. And we do both when we find our true vocation no matter what our age. What is God calling you and I to do with our lives? This gospel story is not nuanced. We're presented with a stark cultural contrast. This is not difficult to understand, nor is it easy for any affluent church to bear. This is one of the many examples of Jesus' life where he flowed through the culture around him, even crossing the borders to a foreign country. He was in the culture, as are we, but he was not defined by the culture. Are we? This is an especially important lesson for those entering the church today. We also live within the culture God has provided us in this time and place. We are defined, or are we defined, by this culture or by the truth of the church Christ brings to every culture, time, and every place. The joyful good news that makes all things new. This is the gift in which we live and move and have our being today, tomorrow, and into eternity. To the glory of God. Amen.